I heard from Frank that uh, LBJ had uh, designated uh, Cord Meyer Jr. to uh, undertake a larger organization while keeping it totally secret. Cord Meyer himself was a uh, rather favored uh, member of the uh, Eastern aristocracy. He uh, was a graduate of Yale University and uh, uh, had uh, joined the Marine Corps during the war and lost an eye in the Pacific fighting. I think that uh, LBJ settled on uh, Meyer as a uh, as an opportunist, Perrin like himself, a Perrin, and a man who had very little left to him in life ever since JFK had uh, had taken Cord's wife as one of his uh, mistresses. I would uh, suggest that uh, Cord Meyer welcomed the approach from LBJ, who was, after all, only the vice president at that time. And, of course, could not uh, number Cord Meyer among uh, JFK's admirers. Quite the contrary. As for Dave Phillips, I knew him uh, pretty well at one time. Uh, he worked for me uh, during the... Uh, the Guatemala project. He had made himself useful to the agency uh, in Santiago, Chile, where he was uh, an American businessman. In any case, his uh, actions, whatever they were, came to the attention of the Santiago station chief. And uh, when his uh, resume became uh, uh, known to uh, people in the Western Hemisphere Division. He was uh, brought in uh, to uh, work on uh, Guatemalan operations. Spurs and Morales and uh, people of that uh, ilk stayed in uh, apartment houses uh, during the preparations for uh, the big event. Uh, their addresses were very... Uh, a subject to change so that uh, where a fellow like uh, Morales had been in one day, he was not necessarily associated with that same address the following day. In short, it was a very mobile uh, uh, experience. Let me point out at this point that if I had wanted to uh, fictionalize uh, what went on in Miami and elsewhere during the run up for the big event, I would have done so. But uh, I don't want any uh, unreality to tinge this particular uh, story or the information, I should say. I was a bench warmer on it, and uh, I had a reputation for honesty. I think it's essential to refocus on what this information that I've been providing you, uh, and you alone, by the way, consists of what is important in the story is that we've backtracked the chain of command up uh, through uh, through Cordmeyer and laying the the, uh, doings at the doorstep of LBJ. He, in my opinion, had a an almost maniacal urge to become president. He regarded uh, JFK as a, as he was, in fact, an obstacle to achieving that. Uh, he could have waited for JFK to finish out his term and then undoubtedly a second term. So that would have put the LBJ at the head of a long list of people who were waiting for some change in the executive branch. So now you have three CIA officials uh, who had, let's say, the means, motive, and opportunity, or, you know, or some connection to kill Kennedy. That's true. But Johnson had, uh, uh, Johnson, as we all know, was a, a very corrupt president. Yeah. Uh, very capable of, uh, of doing um, evil deeds, don't you think? 
Unquestionably. Unquestionably. And if he and if he wanted something done, he he may have turned to someone like Bill Harvey, right? Who was also extremely corrupt right. and uh, and a psycho, basically. Yeah. Uh, oh yes. I could just visualize Harvey and LBJ forming a kind of a thieves uh, compact between them. Mm -hmm. But I think that LBJ. Uh, was an opportunist, and if uh, uh, it was not hesitated to get rid of obstacles in his way, I think his later career exemplified that. The vice president right. had the most to gain, yeah. and he was in a position where he could uh, bring in people like Cornmeyer and. Uh, others of interest and uh, get their take on different things and then in turn issue instructions. There was nobody <coughs> with the leverage that uh, LBJ had, no competitor. He was the vice president and if he wanted to get rid of uh, the president that he had ability to do so, by corrupting uh, different uh, people in the CIA. Mm -hmm. And he had to do it with the limitations of CIA because there was no other group that honored, uh, if I could use, use that term, who honored the uh, clandestine limitations the way CIA did. They could do something, turn their back on it, and move on to something else. It was not like a, a military. There was no accounting in that sense. And we know that LBJ had an unlimited uh, ambition. And we know that he was a corrupt individual. And that the dollar sign was very important to him. As vice president, he didn't have the leverage that a president did or would. And so that was an attractive goal for LBJ. He did not want his career to come to an end as vice president. Uh, who knows about vice presidents? It was very, uh, very important to him that he take advantage as to the extent that he could as vice president, because uh, just a few things had to be accomplished. He had to kill Kennedy, have or have him killed, I should say, and uh, uh, be guilt-free himself. Mm -hmm. and then he could go on and uh, do what he wanted to do as president of the United States. It was a very tempting and almost uh, a logical uh, move on his part. Uh, I, I keep thinking about Bill Harvey, mm -hmm. Paul Harvey, and say, look, there are some things I want to have done. I mean, Harvey didn't want just another, an additional uh, CIA salary. He wanted to move on. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, LBJ could do that for him. If if he were president, right. he couldn't do much for Harvey or anybody as vice president. That was why he used uh, Harvey as the being available and corrupt. It was very easy for the even the vice president to uh, start working with Harvey or anybody else. Just say, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. Mm -hmm. And making sure that they had uh, money that was not their own to do whatever the LBJ wanted to have done. So that when the president was assassinated, the vice president was right there and ready to move along. It doesn't speak well for our 
democracy at that particular time. Harvey was just a, a very strange and complicated individual. Uh, a lot of people have sort of suggested that he was, uh, that alcohol had taken control of him. First of all, he never should have uh, been put in that position. I don't think that uh, uh, he had a pristine connection with anybody. Always had a gun on him, yeah. Particularly in Rome. Harvey uh, even carried guns into uh, restaurants and he would pull them out, slap them down on the, the table to the dismay of other diners, and uh, then he'd settle down to an afternoon of uh, uh, drinking, not eating much because he was way overweight, but certainly uh, uh, drinking. He had been uh, a deputy to Angleton mm -hmm. and very deeply involved in uh, counter espionage activities. Well, Harvey had written in a memo at one point uh, when he was running the executive action program that he wanted to use Corsicans. He yeah, Cors wanted to use what? Corsicans yeah. uh, as hitmen. Do you think it's possible that when he was in Rome that he might have recruited a Corsican assassin to, to kill Kennedy? Yes. Uh -huh. It is possible. I mean, it's one thing to uh, set yourself up in splendid isolation, and it's another thing to use that isolation as a tool right. so that uh, you're not uh, an immediate suspect in the case of a capital crime. Right, because he was in Rome. Is that understandable? Yeah, okay. very, very. My understanding is that Harvey had a very severe clash with Bobby Kennedy around the time of the missile crisis, and that Kennedy basically I think said, it was earlier than that. Guy. And um, he posted a, an old slogan somewhere in the agency premises that said, uh, the tree of liberty must be uh, nourished by the blood of patriots. And this incensed Bobby Kennedy, and uh, they came, they clashed on that particular point. Seems ridiculous. You would think that Bobby would have embraced that particular philosophy, but he did not. And uh, I guess he figured that Harvey was trying to steal uh, some of the glory of uh, whatever was going on in those days.